welcome to the channel. I'm Rev. Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist. Psychology talks about what happens inside people. And theology talks about what happens inside God. There's a little bike I built doing a smoky many, many years ago. You've got to have hobbies. Remember that. What do you do when the one that you love starts to pull things apart? Or you're disintegrating yourself and you start to thirst. Something inside you starts to thirst. In Psalm 63, in verse 1, David says, King David, O oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you, my soul thirsts for you. My body yearns for you in a dry and weary land without water. We all thirst and we all crave and we all need love, attention, food, affection. But where are we seeking it from? What are we thirsting for? What are we dependent upon? What is our codependency? Whatever it is, you'll be earnest to seek it. And you won't give in until your thirst is quenched. The dryness and the weariness, without that water, without that supply, motivates you. And this is how we see what people are really about, when it all comes down to it. What is it that people are seeking? Jesus said, seek and you shall find, well believe me, what is calling out within our soul and within our heart? will lead us and expose us to what we are seeking. 63 verse 5 of the Psalms, David says, My soul is satisfied as with the richest of foods. With joyful lips my mouth will praise you, Lord. When I remember you on my bed, I think of you through the watches of the night, for you are my help. I will sing for joy in the shadow of your wings, and my soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. And then he says, but those who seek my life to destroy it, will go into the depths of the earth. They will fall to the power of the sword. They will become a portion for the foxes. But the king will rejoice in God. All who swear by him will exult, for the mouth of liars will be shut. We have things that are going to come after us and try to pull us down. Sometimes these things come from within and we fail to notice them. They come to destroy what we're seeking. Remember at the start in verse 1, David said, Earnestly I seek you. He had a love and a thirst for God. And we should have that love and thirst for God and the same thirst should work in our relationships. And in verse 9, he comes back to seeking. There are people and things that seek to destroy what you have. 
Now you might not see it, you might not even notice it, but in the spirit realm, there are people that are envious of who you are, what you do, what you stand for, and they want to take you out. I've seen this many times in my life. And David curses these people. And you shouldn't do that, you know. That Jesus said to bless those who curse you. Bless and do not curse. And I just bless them on their way. Good for you. You go your way. I'll go mine. Leave it at that. I don't like hostility. I don't think any of us should like hostility. And David says... Those who seek my life to destroy it will go into the depths of the earth. What that means is when we have horrible intentions, when our mind has run away with us to a point of hostility, we end up falling into our sinful nature. And this could lead, can lead us into all sorts of calamity. And you'll see it in the lives of people. You'll see the sinful nature working in the lives of people. And say, what do you mean? Well, you'll see it. You'll see it. Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither sexually moral, idolaters, adulterers, nor men who submit to perform homosexual acts, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor the drunkards, nor verbal abusers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Humbling words, very humbling words. And so when we go to, and that was 1 Corinthians 6, when we go back to Psalm 63, remember David said, those who seek my life to destroy it will go into the depths of the earth. There's a lot of people that think they know us. They think what they know what's going on and all the rest of it. And they haven't got a clue what we've been through or what we've done or who we are or, you know, how life works. And they're envious. But they go into their sinful nature. They go into things that make them envious and jealous and hostile and interfering and undermining. And they go into a state of psychological disruption. When you're work, working in the earth part of your life instead of the heavenly part, but the earthly part, the dark side of your life, you're heading for a dangerous place you're heading where you fall by the power of the sword where you become a portion for the foxes the power of the sword is you fall under the power of what's right you're pushing against what's right and by conscience we can't beat that we can't beat what's right we can try we can kid ourselves into thinking we can but we can't. We just can't. And we fall, we start to psychologically fall, collapse, by the power of the sword, by the power of what's right. Because the sword in the Bible, in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, speaks of God showing us the way. And here David's talking about people that are being shown the way and they're resisting it. And they just become a portion for the foxes. They just fall prey to the demonic realm, the dark realm. They psychologically unravel. They fall to pieces. They don't think they are, but that's what they're trifling with. David said, For you are my help. I will sing for joy in the shadow of your wings. The shadow of God's wings. Just think for a minute. His wings overshadow you and protect you. Isn't it interesting? Wings are typical of darkness. 
but God's darkness is still light and it frightens away the darkness. And as our, our soul clings to things that are loving and healthy and worthwhile and have integrity and morality, like our marriage and things, your marriage and that, God's right hand upholds us because even in his darkness, there is light and the light cannot comprehend the darkness. And this is the place, verse five of Psalm 63, where our soul is satisfied as though we had the richest of foods. And in our bed, we remember God and the people that we love, all the people that we've loved and loved we forget about the problems and the badness and what's happened and what hasn't happened. We remember the effort they made to love us. And we think through the night watches and remember that God is our help and the people that loved us were our help. And we will sing for joy in the shadow of his wings. Just think for a minute, even in God's darkness, there is light, light enough so that our soul clings to him and his right hand upholds us. We will rejoice in one another and rejoice in God. And God will shut the mouths of those who lie about us. Love, speak the truth in spirit while the others fall to the power of the sword and become a portion for the foxes. I'm Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist. Thank you for joining me. And bye for now.